you really want to apply water uniformly along the whole pivot. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a line of uh, catch cans along here. And when we turn the pivot on, it's gonna run over the top. We're gonna catch the water and we'll set those cans about 10 feet apart, the full length. And then we'll be able to use that data to figure out how uniform the water application is. And we can identify spots where they may be over irrigating or under irrigating. If you're gonna put up an irrigation system, you want uniform water application so that every plant in the field gets an equal amount of water. That way you don't have large yield switch and variations uh, and so forth. So that's the other part of a, of a sprinkler irrigation system is making sure that it's uniformly applying water. Old metal surveying tape. And if you pull it out, you'll see that there's red marks on there. And we, we painted those marks every 10 feet. So we, once we lay this on the ground, we can just walk along and find a red mark and, and put the holder there. And so we know precisely how far from the pivot point the cans are located. Because as, if you look at a center pivot, the outside sprinklers cover way more area than the inside sprinklers. Uh, typically on a center pivot, the nozzles get larger as you get out near the end and uh, they cover more area. And so there, therefore, uh, you have to adjust the nozzle sizes so that they're all the same amount of uh, area gets about the same amount of water. So we have to know, in order to calculate the uniformity, we have to know precisely where the can is in relationship along the full length of the pivot. Well, now that we've set all the uh, stakes at the set spacing, and we've set them from the pivot, uh, from I started at the first tower from the pivot because it, the inside tower really doesn't contribute much area to the pivot and it takes a long time to go over the top. So I um, started at the second, uh, at the first tower so that uh, we can measure the uniformity. And, and the can we use is really just a plastic can. It's, it's almost four and a half inches in diameter. And uh, we call it a can, but it's really plastic. In the old days, they would have used an oil can or something of that order. But we want it large enough diameter so it makes sure that it, what it catches is representative of the amount of water being applied to that area. And as you can see, we just uh, set the can in so that the top is level. We have a little bit of wind today, but that's almost unavoidable when you're doing it like this. We'd like to have perfectly calm, but uh, that's not possible. But the wind today is, is about five miles an hour. I don't think it'll disturb the results too much. Well, as we measure uh, for uniformity, since we have the same size cans all the way along here, we would expect that all the cans would be catching roughly the same amount of water. Now we set the pivot so that by, you know, so that would put down about a half an inch. And then in these cans, we should be, uh, these cans, one inch of water equals about 250 milliliters. 120. So in this last set here, we're measuring up to between 165 to 190 and we're going back down again. What that means is, uh, I just know by looking at this, that right in that area, there's about a 70 or 80 foot length where it's irrigating, it's over irrigating, just by looking at the numbers. And again, this is information that a farmer could gather himself by just putting cans out here. He doesn't have to do as precise as I do, but he could put out a series of cans and, and have it run over. And, and really what we're looking for is that all these cans end up with around I would expect them to be around 125 to 135, but some of them are reading over that. 155. That means that some other part of the field is probably getting less water, and we'll probably see that as we get closer to the pivot point. One of the things I want to point out is if you look out here at the pivot, you see the spacing on all these is about 10 feet. And then right there, you'll see it transitions to 20 feet. And I think that's where we're going to start seeing the reduction going below that 125. If you look back here, we had this group in here where it went from 120 all the way up to 190 and then dropped around 160 and then it's been dropping and now we're down measuring around 110, 75. So we definitely know that uh, there's kind of a mismatch in the sprinkler uh, system. Okay, as you can see behind me, we've uh, picked up all of our uh, cup holders. We've taken out the cups. So we've actually completed the uh, can test on this pivot and one of the things we noticed is that uh, right over in that area between those two towers the nozzles are probably a little bit oversized because you, you can clearly see that uh, the cans caught more water in that area than, than the rest of the pivot. So 
we could probably uh, uh, do a re-nozzle, uh, run a computer program or a spreadsheet to look at re-nozzling this to, and then check against the nozzles that are in there to more balance them out so that uh, the water gets more uniformly spread.